So let's say you're finished with your high resolution model. You've added in all the details that you need. You're quite happy with the way it's looking. The hair's fine. The creases in his bandana are fine. You're happy with everything and you're ready to move on. So what do we need to do? Well, if we reduce this, this is our base mesh. At the moment, we, we couldn't use this as a game model. We certainly couldn't project the normals from the high resolution version down to this one. Plus, there's lots of intersecting geometry, there's models, there's polygons underneath elements, and lots of things which we need to chop out, which will never be seen, and it all takes up precious processing power. What we can do though, this version we can save out as an OBJ ready to import into Maya, which we can then apply a smooth operation to and then we can bake the normals from that down onto a game version which we need to create but we don't need to start from scratch with the game version we can use this model but what we'll do is we're just gonna subdivide it once and then we'll just see how it's looking now those edges are nicely softened they're not perfect but this is a much better starting point for our game model. These here we could maybe subdivide those another time just to round off those edges. So that's step one. We've subdivided a couple of times. Now this here is quite angular but we could fix that in Maya. So I'm not going to subdivide that again because it will subdivide the whole thing. So we've subdivided the areas that we want. Now we need to strip out the areas that we don't want. So straight away, these laces, we know that they're going to be projected onto the game model in the form of a normal map. So we don't need the physical geometry in our game model. So we can get rid of those. These buckles, they're the same as this big one. So there's no point doing three times the work. We'll get rid of those. When we've finished with this, we'll just copy it and bring it down, down here. The same with these studs. What I'll do is I'll delete these. This one is uh, orientated uh, vertically. They're all the same. So again, I'll keep one and delete the others. And we're just going round and assessing which areas to keep. Again, these studs are the same as that one, just squashed. So we don't need to duplicate the work. And these straps, we can get rid of most of these because they can be added on through the normal map. In fact, we can get rid of all of them. A bit of clever modeling, and these can be incorporated in, like I say, via the normal map. So again, we'll get rid of those. So that's the main areas which we don't need. And what we're gonna do now is just do subdivide, refine, control mesh. And what that will do is bake that subdivision into that model. And if we look now, you can see the wireframe because that topology is now baked in. We can't step down into a lower subdivision because this is the lowest subdivision. So from here, we now need to go in and optimize this a bit more. And what we're going to do is we're just going to Let's hide everything and we'll start from the basics and work our way through it a step at a time. There's no point in trying to tackle this fully. So display hide unselected. So if we look at this, for example, we want to get rid of all the geometry that is inside the model. Now this could be quite an easy step to optimize because we use this to create our shirt originally. So we select that and break it off. And now with this hand here, it comes all the way inside here, so we don't need all of that. Let's maybe delete up to there. That's because I've got symmetry still on. Turn symmetry off. 
delete that mesh inside there. As you can see, there's no geometry inside. And that's because what we ideally want is we want a seamless mesh. No geometry inside, because when you come to rigging, you'll end up with polygons popping through and it'll just be an absolute pain to rig. And then what we need to do is just line these up and then effectively combine it. So if we combine those two objects, what we need, we can optimize these edges here because they're flat. And then we just want to merge those. Like that. For some reason the uh, the keys don't work when you have the window at this side. Not for merge anyway. I don't know if anybody else has had that problem. Press Control M and it doesn't seem to work. But you get the idea there. This is now seamless and it's all joined up. And we continue that around the arm so that it's just one solid mesh. And then we need to continue on optimizing it further. So when we approach optimization we need to look for two things. Well three things really. Firstly what we've just done is making the model seamless and removing any internal polygons which are not seen and not used. We also want to get rid of areas where the geometry is flat at the front here it's flat, but the wrap at the back we have a slight curve. But that's such a shallow curve, it doesn't add anything to the shape of the model. So we can go in and we can merge that, and it looks pretty much the same. Now down here where we added these bevels in, we have these three edges here. And if we look from certain angles you can see that the bottom of there is flat so they're not adding anything we can delete those the same with this edge here but rather than delete that we'll just merge the ring above now here we can see this is quite angular this curve here but we won't fix that now we'll leave that now all we want to do for this stage go through and do a very quick optimization pass. Uh, you could do this in Maya but I prefer to do it in Silo because I find it a lot easier to use. So again we've got lots of edge loops here we don't need all these so let's just select every other one, select the edge rings, modify, merge and again it looks pretty much the same. And this is all we're doing now, just going round. You could do it a lot quicker than I am. Like for the arm, for example, these elements here don't add much. Perhaps keep that middle one, delete those outer ones. And that's the beauty of this. You can delete stuff, and if you look at it and realize it's actually affected the shape more than you thought, you can undo the shape of the arm. If we wanted to go a bit more drastic, we could collapse some of the edge rings. So let's say, go around, select every other edge ring like so, merge those, and then follow that up and down the model. And what we do in for areas like this, we want the arm to stay round here, so we don't want to collapse that edge. So we just leave a triangle there, which then goes into the arm shape. And this goes all the way up. And then again, we can copy the, uh, that process with these moving up and down the arm, just keeping the area of the sleeve round. If we collapse these edges here, it would look too angular. So we can afford to keep those round, and it's quite an open area of the model. 
So that's what we're going to do. Just leave that round. Again, going down to the down to the uh, hands, and again we can go in and optimize these. Strip these down. On the knuckles, there's too many edge loops in there, so we can delete the middle ones of that of those. Even these fingernails which we added in, we can probably go in and collapse those because that detail will come through in the normal map. And there we'll just delete those edges to make those into quads. And then if we look at that finger again, this is where the knuckle is. So we can probably get rid of that edge loop there, that edge loop there. This is the key part because when this bends, you need to have the geometry in there to actually bend with it. If we deleted that edge loop and that edge loop, when this bent, when this bent, it would just collapse in on itself and there'd be no form. You need those these extra edge loops here just to help keep the shape of the finger as it bends. And again, if you uh, need less polygons in this final model, you could make the fingers like that. Sort of a pyramid shape, a, a diamond shape, by deleting those edges underneath and above. So th this edge here doesn't add much to the shape, if anything, so we can afford to delete that. And then because we've got this long polygon here, this looks like it's got uh, too much geometry in, so we can go in again. Look at that, does it add to the shape? Well, it does on the thumb, but it doesn't on the back of the hand. So let's delete it from the back of the hand, and then we can maybe be a bit creative and triangulate that, like so, and the same underneath. Maybe delete that there, delete that there. Now as you can see this can turn into quite a long job but it's worth doing and you end up with a very nicely optimised game model. So there you can see we've started to reduce the arm and the hand and his shirt. So just going over that again, we want it to be seamless so we're joining the arm to the sleeve here, keeping this area round because it's a key area and there's contrasting colours and we need to keep that shape there. The arm, however, we can afford to strip down every other edge loop, every other edge ring, sorry, and reduce the shape of the arm because a lot of that will be smoothed out with the normal map. We're then going in the rest of the model and reducing areas which aren't, let me just merge this, reducing areas where the geometry doesn't add to the shape or it doesn't help it to deform. This for example here, we can get rid of that, let's just check from the side, uh, well actually that does add to the shape but because this is a crease we, we'll, we can probably get away with relying on the normal map to give us that crease detail there. And go around and I'll just merge those there and then select that edge ring and merge again. And it's all about just take a step back, look at the model, see where you can reduce. And there's all this area under here which is far too compacted. This sleeve here Again, just going in, chopping things out. This area here is actually underneath um, one of the straps. So we could delete that, or we could delete the strap, and then use the normal map to, build, to add the strap into here. And while we're here, we've got an edge there. That's quite flat, so we can get rid of that, and we can get rid of that one, because it's such a shallow angle, you'll never see it. And also keep zooming out from a game point of view. Just so you can see what polygons are actually needed. It's mainly for the silhouette. Again, that's not adding so we can get rid of that. Maybe select that edge ring and merge it too. Now I'm not going to go through and do the whole model 
while you're watching. Uh, it'll take quite a long time and it'll probably take me a couple of days work. But what we'll do is in the next video, uh, when we'll move into actually move into Maya, you can have a good look at the model and just see where I've optimised, what I've done and what I've stripped out. Let's just bring back the rest of the model before we end this video and just point out another few key points. So as an example, where this bandana joins onto the, the uh, poncho here, that will need welding in. So just deleting the geometry here. This is just a very quick example. So combine those objects, delete that geometry there, symmetries on and then you can just bridge like so. I mean obviously it's not going to work up to there but you get the idea and then that is seamless onto there. And then as we're looking we can see that's quite an uh, that's quite a severe angle there so we need to leave that in the model but we can delete these other bits so we've just got those in there where these two meet obviously that needs to be joined seamlessly and again where that meets the shirt that needs to be joined seamlessly unless these are going to animate in game and need to flap around in which case then it needs to be separate so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to let you just go in and strip this model right down until you've chopped out as much as you want. I mean you'll get to a point where you don't feel like you can chop out any more. Again this is just a first pass at the optimization. The next stage is to actually project a normal map onto a model and then you can tweak the shape and see where you can optimize it more where the normal map will help you out so you can chop out those polygons and also where you need to add more geometry in because the normal map uh, fails in a word so that's this stage done like I say just go through as we have been doing optimize these models down try and make them as seamless as possible reduce any unused or unseen geometry and uh, then export it as an OBJ and then in the next video we'll move into Maya where we start to actually get it even more game ready and uh, tweak the game model a lot more.